Hallelujah. <clears throat> hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. I exalt you. I exalt you. I exalt you. I exalt you. Raka bagaba la ya shiga bagaba. Raka bada do da shakata la ya shiga bade de ya. Raka pata la ya shiga bega bela lo ya shatala. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Raka bada la shaga bada la shiga bade de ya. Oh kata la ya shiga bade de ya. Raka ta la ya shiga bade de ya. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's so grateful to have you, Thompson. Raka Panda La Ya Sugar Bede Deya. It's my wife's choice. Raga Bode Dora Sugar Bede. Le Peke Tana. Le Peke Peto Ora Sugar. So it's a very simple song. We all know it already. What are we saying to you? We are so Thompson. So we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you. We're exalted. Okay, we're we're exalted. You. We're exalted. Can you celebrate my man of God? Raka patala ya shiga bede lo ya shakabala. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in need. Heavenly Father. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Alleluia. Lord, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Alleluia. Lord, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Alleluia. Oh, yeah. Lord, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Alleluia. Oh, yeah. Alleluia. Yeah, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Alleluia. Oh yeah. Alleluia. Oh yeah. Alleluia. Oh yeah. Alleluia. Oh yeah. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Hallelujah. 
Alleluia. 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 Father, we worship you, we exalt your name, we thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. Name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt you. We thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you for your mighty, for the mighty outpouring of the Spirit. We thank you for your mighty, for the mighty outpouring of the Spirit. It is not by power, it's not by mind, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. We exalt your name, we magnify you, Lord, we exalt you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you. Rogobodolo, Yasaka Balala, Shaka Balala. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heaven. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the earth. Let your glory be above all 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 the earth. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the earth. Let the glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Father, we bless you. We exalt your name. 
Let your name be glorified in this today's session. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. You're welcome to this episode of Prospering the Market Square. Wow, I can see my man of God, uh, Pastor Obed. Obed, so good to see you, sir. Amen. Now, we're going to have a great time today. Amen. Uh, you're welcome to this episode of Prospering in the Market Square. My name is Manasseh Dogon, also known as the Prophetic CEO. I'm privileged to be the least steward at the Renaissance Place uh, Metropolitan Church in the city of Abuja, Nigeria. Now, we have been on this series for, like, this is the second month right now. We've been doing a lot of teaching on mar mar the marketplace, trying to be able to pick some revelation from text into contemporary context, how we can be able to apply the Word of God we read in our daily devotion into our, the, our corporate context, in our business place, in our marketplace, in our corporate system, in the industry of our assignment. You know, so, and God has been speaking so, so much to us. You know, I, as I, I'm finishing this, uh, this series on uh, the science of spiritual forecasting. You know, I told you yesterday that one of the greatest challenges of, of most believers to call into the market system is that their inability to be able to forecast the future. And I said yesterday that every industry has a future. Every nation has a future. Every economy has a future. Every ecosystem has a future. Every institution has a future. Our job description as Christians, as believers, as prophetic agents, is for we to be able to prayerfully, in our, from our prayer chamber, tap into certain futures, tap into the future, to be able to be able to see the opportunity that God is going to be releasing in the future. The conspiracy of the enemy that the Lord is planning, the enemy is planning in the future, come down to the present begin to devise strategy on how to be able to take advantage of this opportunity or dismantle every programming of darkness in that very ecosystem. A lot of us, the future shouldn't take each and every one of us unaware. As we journey in our, in our respective industry of assignment, as we journey, as we begin to do business in our various sector and various uh, hemisphere, various, various ecosystem, various, various continent, various country, various territory, we must understand that the future, God is, now, God is, God is so, so much interested as the future. I, I mean, God is so, so much interested in the future as He is concerning the present. You know, we, God's intention for you and I is for we to be able to, to equip ourselves with a vital set of skills, revelation, and knowledge to be able to champion the cause of God in their, in their respective industry, in our respective uh, ecosystem. You know, advancing the cause of God to cut across generation, to cut across generation. So we cannot do that without discerning and deciphering the future. We, so we, 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 we call it what we call forecasting, what uh, the cycle of market call forecasting in the kingdom, we call it prophetic. Forecasting speaks about predicting the future event and antecedent future condition to predict it from today. The prophetic also is God's, is God's ancient technology by which is breed, is prophetic breed are able to be able to tap into the future. How we're able to say, stay in the presence and be able to peep into certain, the certain future, you know, and God began to reveal it unto us, you know, as we begin to stay in the, in, in the, in the word of God, in the place of prayer, the Lord began to speak to us concerning the future. So we have to understand that, you know, the future we cannot predict, we cannot dominate. The future we cannot predict, we cannot dominate. The future we cannot predict, we cannot conquer. The future we cannot predict, we cannot conquer. The future that we cannot predict, we cannot prepare for it. The future we cannot prepare for it, we cannot establish the counsel of God in that spiritual dispensation. So it's of, of, it's of importance to God how we equip ourselves as believers, not just to be relevant in one dispensation, but in several. Daniel was relevant in four different dispensations. Four. A single man, Daniel. I will come to that today. Daniel was relevant not just in one regime or political regime or governance. He, he was relevant in four different dispensations. So the intention of you and I, for, uh, for God, for you and I, is for we to be able to be able to tap at least into seven years' time from now. What is going to be the future of the industry that you are right now? In seven years' time, where will, you, where will the industry be? What will be the point of emphasis? What will be the, the point of evolution? The point of evolution in that industry, in seven years' time, in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, how can we project into the future? 
So the future shouldn't take you and I unaware. The intention of God for us is for you and I to be able to predict the future. Our greatest advantage has been the Holy Spirit. So today I'm going to be teaching on, yesterday I spoke about the five senses, perception, spiritual perception. Today I'm going to be decoding some mysteries. I'm going to be decoding some deep mysteries. I'm going to be talking on uh, the prophetic programming. How that every one of us has been programmed prophetically, you know, you know, there's a prophetic program. I trust that when I'm doing tomorrow, I'm going to be talking on the science of prophecy, and that is going to change your life. I'm going to be sharing on the science of prophecy tomorrow. This is a deep revelation. It took me several years of research and personal experience in the prophetic for me to be able to put that very course together. So tomorrow, I'm going to be talking on the science of prophecy. Boy, after today's tomorrow session. You'll be able to know how to activate the prophet, your prophetic life. You'll be able to know how to be able to look at someone and to be able to pick a word and speak a word with precision and accuracy to such one. I will teach you from biblical-based principle to understanding the whole anatomy of the science of prophecy. And I know that God is going to help us. So today I'm going to be talking on what I call uh, the prof prophetic, uh, prophetic uh, programming. Each and every one of us has been programmed. Amen. What the word programming simply means a process of preparing an instructional program for a device. The dictionary definition of programming is simply means a process of preparing an instructional program for a device. But I was able to contextually study the scripture systematically and contextually study the scripture and I discovered the word program is simply means it's actually a spiritual DNA encoded and encrypted deeply into the human spirit by the workings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I come again. I define programming as, as a spiritual DNA. Amen. A spiritual Genetics, it's spiritual genetics or spiritual DNA, amen, encoded and encrypted deeply into the human spirit by the workings of the Holy Spirit. So the working of the Holy Spirit in us encrypted, encrypt and encode certain genetics, certain things in genetic into our DNA. And that is a prophetic. So God carved that, God encoded that, God encrypted that into our, into our, our genetics right before we have been conceived. Our prophetic destination doesn't begin when we just uh, uh, finish from university or no, 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 no. Our prophetic destination actually begun right before conception. God has carved us, God has encrypted, God has encoded certain prophetic genetics into our DNA by the workings of the Holy Spirit. So our, there, are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are two dimensions of our encounter into this very prophetic genetics. The first one is that when we receive the life of Jesus into our life, it begins this dimension of, of our journey into, uh, uh, into activating certain prophetic genetics begins at the salvation experience. When we receive Jesus into our lives, there's, there's, there's a transmission that happens to our spirit. There are certain activations that happen by the reason of we receiving the life of Christ into our life. Amen. The second one begins as a, as a Pentecost experience, when we actually have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit. When we do encounter the Holy Spirit, there is a recalibration that happens to our mind and to our spirit. There are certain things that may not be of we have not made, we might have not been able to activate over time that as we encounter God, I counter the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, there are certain activation. Amen. So prophetic program is simply is simply uh, is simply spiritual uh, genetics, amen, encoded into our uh, spiritual genetics encoded into our DNA DNA. Amen. They are encrypted and encoded into our DNA. Deeply into our DNA by the working of the Spirit. Spiritual programming are basically, amen, uh, 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 encoding or uh, encrypting uh, certain uh, spiritual genetics into our DNA. 
Amen. By the working of the Holy Spirit. As, as we begin to walk with the Holy Spirit, as we begin to encounter the Holy Spirit, there are certain activation that happens to our spirit. By default, God designed us to be prophetic. By default, God designed every one of us to be prophetic. My journey into the prophetic began when I was 17. I began to have an encounter with God as I began to stay. One of the things that characterized my life growing up is prayer and fasting. I fasted and prayed right from when I was 17. Go on seven days dry fasting, stretching three days fasting, run in 21 days fasting. At the point, my mother would be crying, what are you looking for? So the more I did that, the more God began to expose me to certain prophetic encounters. And those were the things that recalibrated my mind. That those very code that God was able to, to encode or decode into my genetics, those prophetic code that God was able to, to encode and encrypt into my genetics were actually activated by the workings of the Spirit as I begin to work with God. So our, the activation of certain prophetic things, uh, giftings that God has put in us is dependent on your personal alignment. We, det we determine how fast we grow. Our spiritual maturity and growth it's dependent on how we're able to align with God. You and I determined how fast we grow. Amen. So Jeremiah chapter 1 verse, verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I have sanctified thee. And I have ordained thee. Underline the word ordained. There are two words I would like to underline here. The word new and the word ordained. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Underline the word knew. Amen. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I have ordained thee. Underline the word ordained thee. A prophet unto nation. So the ordination that God did upon the life of Jeremiah was a spiritual ordination that happened before he was being conceived. You should have known that Spiritual ordination, there are two different kinds of ordination. Two. That is what we call ceremonial ordination and we have spiritual ordination. Spiritual ordination is more powerful than ceremonial ordination. When I was in the seminary, after having my first degree in Abu Zaria history, I went back to the seminary to have my second Bachelor of Art degree in theology. When we finish, it's part of the ritual, part of the normal uh, ceremony that when you finish from the seminary, they have to ordain you, they have to do. So all of the ordination that comes, we are normal ceremonial ordination. Amen. So there are two different kinds of ordination. There are spiritual ordination and there is ceremonial ordination. The most important among all of those is the spiritual ordination. I've seen so many people that were ordained by their pastors, ordained by their prophet, ordained by, by institution, ordained. But in the realm of the spirit, the ordination is not activated. The most important form of ordination is the spiritual ordination. When we encounter God, we encounter the person of the Holy Spirit. When God, when we discover, when after God had predestined us from the realm of the from the realm of uh, celestial, God has predestined us. And when we've been conceived, now you see, our prophetic journey doesn't just begin from conception. Right before our mother conceived us, God has carved our prophetic spirit. Certain prophetic genetics have already been encoded and encrypted into our human spirit by the workings of the spirit. So, so many people are so, so there are two different kinds of ordination the ceremonial ordination and the spiritual ordination. The both of them are important, but the most important is the spiritual ordination. I've seen so many people being ordained by their pastors. The pastor empty one liter of extra virgin goya, empty it on their head. Strike mantle on them seven times. Amen. But all of those things, hands in the flesh, there is no any, it doesn't carry weight in the realm of the spirit. It doesn't carry weight. What carry weight? There's nothing that impacts a human spirit like spiritual ordination. What a spiritual ordination is a, is a form of encounter that when we encounter the person of the Holy Spirit, there are certain things that God has ordained us to do, certain potential, certain gifts that, are, that God has put in us that finds natural activation by that encounter with the Holy Spirit. So there's an ordination that comes. When men, you see, we see all through scripture, every patriarch that was ever used by God or prophet that was ever used by God were first ordained by God. Every prophet, I'm not talking about kings. Kings were actually, there's a ceremonial ordination that comes with the king, kingly office. Why? Because we have to, the people have to recognize, recognize the, properly recognize that, that, 
you have been licensed to lead. You have been licensed to lead. But as per the prophetic office and ministerial office, the first most important form of ordination is a spiritual ordination. And it happens in the secret place. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. A lot of preachers going around, anointing people, pouring oil on people, striking mantle, pouring one liter extra goya on the head. Ordination, ceremonial ordination that happens without, God, without God's approval and the realm of the Spirit. So every ceremonial ordination is not in, important unless there is, a, there is, a, there is an alignment with, between the ceremonial ordination and the spiritual ordination. A man that has not yet been ordained by God cannot be recognized from heaven. What makes our voice an authority over an atmosphere? over an ecosystem, or over a territory. It is not how loud we speak, but it's how much our voice has been ordained to amplify the counsel of God in the dispensation. When our voices are being activated, are being empowered in the spirit, animate or inanimate objects recognize the authority of that spiritual ordination that comes upon our vocal cord. When we stand, even our smile in the realm of the spirit commands authority. Even our smile our appearance in the realm of the spirit and appearance of a man that, or, that has already been ordained in the realm of the spirit by God, even his appearance without even any utterances carries a weight, carries an authority. So the Bible says that now, look at now, that before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. The word yada, the word yada as by why a D A Yada is a Greek word derived from an English word new. Before I knew thee, the word new, the Greek word for the word new is Yada. As used in the above passage, that same very word Yada has two different basic meanings. It basically has two different meanings. The first meaning of the word Yada as used there as a derivation of the English word new. The first meaning of the word is divine recognition. Divine recognition. The second meaning of the word Yada is used there new. When God is saying that I knew thee, the second meaning of that is mean it means divine designation. So when the Bible was talking about Jeremiah, say before and before before what he said before I formed in the belly, I knew thee. What God was actually talking about, God was talking about is divine recognition and is what divine designation. Meaning that our divine recognition and our divine designation is, has already been mandated right before our conception. God said that before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And I said the word knew there, the Greek word for the word knew there is yada. And the word yada has two different connotations. The first one is divine, divine word recognition. It talks about fellowship. It talks about intimacy. It talks about certain level of alignment between man and God. Certain alignment that happens between the realm of man and the realm of God. The first meaning is divine what? Recognition. The second one is divine designation. Designation speaks about your position in the place of your assignment. Your God ordination for you to function in a, in a jurisdiction. Amen. So what comes before the first is divine recognition. God's, God must recognize our voices in the realm of the spirit for our voices to be able to impact our generation. Any voice that, is, that has not yet been registered in the realm of the spirit that is not recognized by the authority of Yahweh cannot affect the counsel of heaven, no matter the scripture that that very voice articulates. Now, you see, we understand oratory and articulation is not an evidence of the anointing. Amen. So, God is trying to say that before you are being conceived, I have what? Your divine recognition is ascertained. Your divine designation has been established. Amen. The word nata. Amen. The word nata. N-A-T-H-A-N. The word nata is a Greek word derived from the English word ordain. The Greek word for ordain is nata. N-A-T-H-A-N. Amen. Hallelujah. It simply means to appoint. It means to appoint. It means to designate. So meaning that after one's recognition has been established in the realm of the spirit, God ordained man. The ordination of Jeremiah 
didn't happen from conception. It happened long before conception. Amen. There's an appointment, there's a prophetic appointment that God has given to us to every dispensation. Everyone, our prophetic destination or designation has already been established by God long before we, we, we were conceived in our, in our mother's womb. Praise the Lord. John chapter 3 verse 8. John chapter 3 verse 8. Amen. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou knowest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, or theta it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. The Bible says anyone that is born of the Spirit of God is like the wind. You cannot discern the wind. So that is, if the Bible says, Anyone that is born by the Spirit is like the wind. It simply means that we all have, and they all say, everyone. Amen. Amen. Can I read that, please? Amen. It says, John chapter 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou knowest, thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it goeth. And Tita it goeth, where it cometh, and with Tita it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So the Bible says, everyone, not someone, everyone that is born of the Spirit is like the wind. The word wind used in the scripture is the word pneuma. It speaks about a divine substance. A divine substance. So anyone that is born of the Spirit is like the wind. You cannot discern. You cannot cage a wind. You cannot hold the wind. You cannot tie. You cannot bind the wind. You can hear the sound of the wind. But you cannot know where the wind is coming from, the origin, and its destination. You will not know the alpha, you will not know the omega. But you will hear the sound of the wind, you cannot discern where the wind is coming and the wind is going. That is a perfect description of what it means for we to be prophetic. Our prophetic DNA is encoded and encrypted into our genetics by the workings of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. By the workings of the Holy Spirit. So every one of us that is born of God is born, is born into, is born, is, there are genetics, there are genetics, spiritual genetics, prophetic genetics that were, they were encoded and encrypted into such a one's DNA by certain workings of the Holy Spirit. As we stay with God in the place of prayer, as we commune with the person of the Holy Spirit, amen. Praise the Lord. As we commune with the person of the Holy Spirit, there are certain workings that the Lord begins to do in our lives. Certain workings, hallelujah, that the Lord begins to do, hallelujah. I needed to just drop something at the background, amen. There are certain workings that the Lord has put down in us, amen, as we begin to work. Now, I'm going to be sharing deep revelation. This is going to recalibrate your journey, your, recalibrate your mindset. It's going to put in your in your in your spiritual uh, uh, perception, certain keys to operating in the prophetic. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, First Corinthians chapter chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. I'll start reading from verse one. First Corinthians chapter twelve from verse one. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter twelve from verse one. Now, concerning spiritual gift, brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Meaning that God doesn't want you and I to be ignorant about spiritual gift. Spiritual gifts are actually tools given to us by God to be able to advance his cause, to reveal his mandate in the earth realm. Spiritual, spiritual gifts are God's resource to mankind. Amen. There are diverse means and tools given to us to reveal the love of Jesus to the world. So the Bible said, now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were what Gentiles carried away unto this dumb idol. Amen. Even as ye were led. Now the word dumb there speaks about what is voiceless, what is dead. So before, they, before this, uh, 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 the, the Corinthians encounter God, actually the God that we, they, they, they were paying allegiance to was a dumb God. It's, it's totally devoid of voice. It's voiceless. It's powerless. His voice is mute. He cannot speak. So Paul was speaking in verse 2. He said, Ye know that ye were what? Uh, that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Verse 4. For this, for there are diversity, what? Of gift, but the same spirit. 
They are what? Differences of administration, but the same Lord. Amen. Meaning that the gift of the Spirit manifests in diverse ways, in nine ways, but it is the source is the Holy Spirit. God is the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the source. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Are we there? Verse, verse 7. No, verse 6. And there are diversity of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. The manifestation of the Spirit of God was given for profit. You cannot function in the market system, in an ecosystem, in that industry that God has called you in the city, without activating the prophetic gift, the spiritual gift. They are given for profit making. God gives us is the spiritual gift for profit making. God is the, is the smartest businessman. Everything that leaves the realm of God into the realm of God is ordained to, make, to, to be multiplied. Everything that leaves the realm of God, every investment that leaves the realm of God into the realm of man is meant to multiply. Every resources that leave the realm of God into the realm of man, into the hand of man, into the realm of man, is ordained for profiting, for profit making. So the Bible says every spiritual gift that is given to you and I is given for profit. It's meant for we to profit. How can you use the nine gift of the spirit to profit in the marketplace? How can you use the gift of discernment, the gift of speaking in tongues that has been encoded encoded and encrypted into your life? The gift of discernment of spirit, the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the gift of speaking of tongues, interpretation of tongues. How can you use that in your respective corporate system, in your institution where you are right now, in the territory where you are, in the nation where you are right now, in the ecosystem where you are, how can you use the working of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit to make profit? Most of the time, when we, when we see the word profit, we normally is, we look at it as a synonym to circular uh, uh, affair. Profit is a spiritual word. It speaks about ability to multiply that which is given. When God gives us any resources, gives us any responsibility, gives us anything, God expects us to be fruitful. In the book of John 15, the Bible says, by this that people will know that we are his disciples when we bring forth fruit. God is a productivity God. God is a very pro productive God. Every resource that leaves the hand of God into the hand of man, into the realm of man, by nature, God had, God had ordained such resources to multiply. Nothing God has ever given to man is meant to be to remain in the state that it was given. When the master, the Bible spoke about in Matthew 25, gave his gift, talent, one to one, two to the other, the other one five. It was given for profit making. God is a business God. How have you been using the gift of discernment to make profit? How does the gift of discernment enhance your chances to make profit in your secular operation? How do, how do you use the prophetic gift to make profit, to reveal the love of Jesus and to advance the cost of the kingdom in your respective industry? How can you use the gift of prophecy to be able to make profit for the kingdom? How can they, how can you in that place you operate, how has the gifts of spiritual gift that God has put in you, how have they enhanced your chances to multiply your results to be more productive? So the Bible says the spiritual gift is given for us to make profit. Amen. Right? Verse 8. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, and to another, the word of knowledge, by the same spirit. To another, faith, by the same spirit. To another, the gift of healing, by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, these are the nine gifts of the spirit given. Amen. Now, I'm going to be talking about five wires of prophetic DNA. Five wires of prophetic DNA. Five wires. That are basically five wires in every prophetic programming. I said earlier that, that programming, that prophetic programming is basically is, uh, is encoding or encrypting prophetic genetics into human DNA by the workings of the spirit. There are certain things that God has encoded, certain spiritual prophetic instincts, giftings. Gift of the Spirit that God has en en engrafted 
He has encoded and encrypted into the human spirit by the workings of the Holy Spirit. So these spiritual giftings, I'm going to be talking about five wires, five wires of prophetic DNA. And those five wires, I will pick them from this gift of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit in this context, I'm going to explain, explain them as wires. You know the word wires? What the word wire means? Like when you have cable, when you want to wire a house, what gives generate light in the house? It's not the cement or the blocks or the bricks. No. What generates light is a wiring. When an engineer, an electrical engineer, after building a house, an electrical engineer comes in there to wire the house and ensure that he does it professionally. So the wiring of the house brings illumination when put light. You cannot lighten a complete building without wiring it first. So the wiring of the house is what actually enhances the house ability to be able to, to, to establish certain illumination light. So there are certain what I call what uh, five wires of prophetic DNA. So every prophetic DNA that has been programmed, certain genetics that God has programmed, has five wires. And this wire is what makes up a prophetic spirit. What makes up a prophetic life, our prophetic instincts, our prophetic giftings, are actually the summation or the summary of these very five wires. The first wire I'm going to be talking about is what I call diacrasis. Diacrasis. The first wire, I'm talking about five wires of prophetic DNA. The first wires is what I call diacrasis. And they are all captured in the scripture we just read now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. The first wire, the first among the five wires of prophetic DNA is what I call diacrasis. It's spelled D-I-A-K-R-I-S-I-S. Diacrasis. The word diacrasis is a Greek word derived from the word, from English word discerning. Discerning. The gift of discernment. Amen. Discerning. The Greek word there is diacrasis. And it simply means distinguishing of spirit. To distinguish between spirit. Amen. Amen. It also means disputation. The, very, the, the, the variance of opinion on a matter is the spirit inspired kind of judgment. So what what diacrasis is actually talking about the gift of discernment, your ability to be able to distinguish between spirit. It's a supernatural ability to be able to know to be able to distinguish between spirit. The gift of discernment is what the word the first wire of every prophetic DNA is what I call what diacrasis. And that diacrasis is a Greek word for the word discernment, the gift of discernment. And it simply means the supernatural ability to be able to distinguish between spirit. Now, when the gift of discernment is upon you as an entrepreneur, as a believer, as a minister, it empowers you with the ability to be able to discern the spirit that sponsors an action, decision, and reaction. You will find yourself in a marketplace or in a place where people do things and it may look all good in the physical all nice, all righteous, all holy. You, they'll bring an investment for you to invest your money. They'll bring certain things for you to throw your money. Then all of those things will look very beautiful. All will look very nice. But it takes a man that has, over time, activated the gift of discernment for him to be able to discern that in spite, no matter the good, I mean, how the appearance of this and that, how wonderful it looks on the surface. Amen. That there will that be a need for the spirit that inspired this thing for what is in doing that, what is behind this thing to be word discerned. So the first wiring of a prophetic spirit is what I call what the gift of discernment. It's actually what is the supernatural ability to be able to distinguish between spirit. You cannot say you are a prophetic if you cannot discern, if you cannot distinguish spirit that is responsible for certain things. People talk, they talk all nice, all beautiful, all righteous, but you have to learn. To not always be carried away by every appearance of things that look good on the surface. There are many things that look good. Many businesses that look good. Many business partners that look good. Many associates that look good. But you have to learn to discern, to see beyond the realm of niceness. Because all that, look, that, all that glitter is not always gold. You must learn. You don't throw your money into that business because everybody is throwing your money. Because everybody is doing it. You don't see a man... And so oh, this guy is a good businessman and you now begin going into business partnership without discerning the spirit that is sponsoring the, the person. You should learn to sleep over issues. 
prayerfully ask the Lord to show you the spirit that is responsible to, for certain action and, and reaction. You don't just jump into partnership, jump into relationship, jump into a business because you, it all appear nice. A lady look beautiful, a guy look handsome. Oh, look, oh, look prosperous. Then you know, don't, don't be carried away by the surface. You have to learn to discern the spirit behind certain action and reaction. So I call it what? Dare crisis. The second wiring of every prophetic spirit is what I call what? Josa. Josa. As per G I O W S A. The second wiring of every prophetic DNA is what I call what? Josa. G I O W S A. The word Josa is derived from an English word, tongues. It simply means unacquired supernatural tongues. Now, speaking in tongues is not acquired. It's an unacquired supernatural tongues. It's a supernatural ability to be able to speak the language of the spirit. Spirit inspire utterances. It's tongues. You know, there are certain revelations that God would not bring to a prophetic man or a prophetic agent. That sometimes there are certain prophecies, a certain prophecy that will come in form of tongues. There are certain instructions that you will come after praying in tongues. Such is, God will bury, God will encrypt such kind of revelation, instruction in tongues. There are certain times I'm praying, when I'm seeking the face of God in prayer, I begin to pray in tongues. When I finish, God began to give me interpretation of tongues. That this, the tongues that you have just spoken, this is what it actually means. That's an instruction that God will sometimes bury or encrypt in tongues. Aside praying scriptural based prayers, one of the, most, the second most powerful form of prayer is praying in tongues. Aside scriptural based prayer, prayer that is based on scripture, not emotion. The most, one of the most powerful ways to pray is to pray the will of God, pray the written word of God. Aside that, second most powerful form of prayer is praying in tongues. There are certain revelations that God will give you concerning the market where you are, concerning the future of your industry, concerning the, your business associate, your business partners, your husband, your wife, your spouse, before you get married. There are certain clients, certain business associates, that before you actually go into a deal with them, God will, you begin, when you stay in the prayer place, you begin to pray. You begin to pray in the spirit. Certain revelation comes in form of coded tongues. So speaking in tongues is actually... It's a supernatural. The tongues, the gift of tongues is actually, it's a supernatural ability to be able to what? To be able to, to, to translate what? Is a supernatural. Let me explain it now. I said the word, the word, the word, uh, Josa is a word, Grosa. Amen. It's derived from, a, from English word, tongues. It simply means unacquired supernatural tongues. It's a supernatural inspiration that comes to that, that comes to the human spirit. Inspiring him or her to begin to speak divine languages, supernatural languages. It is one of the wiring of every prophetic DNA. You must learn to be able to speak the language of God. Speaking in tongues is the language of God. Though the Bible went further to speak about the tongues of men and of angels. Amen. Sometimes God uses an unknown. You can be in a, in a, from a particular tribe or the particular nation or continent. And when you pray in the spirit, God begins to, like what happened in the act of the apostle. They began to speak. They actually spoke both in tongues of men and angels in Acts chapter 2. So that some of the traders that came out were able to discern that they were actually, this is what they were saying in their language. Amen. So God can encrypt certain spiritual instruction, revelation in tongues. So when we begin to pray in tongues, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's an empowerment that comes to us to tap into the frequency of God to be able to begin to speak His divine language. So that when God decides to encode certain mysteries, certain instruction in tongues, by the working of the Spirit, we begin to decode them, to begin to understand what are the instructions, right? what are the instructions that are tied to our prosperity that is coming from this tongue. So as you pray in tongues, always pray for God to give you wisdom to be able to interpret them, to understand them. Sometimes when you think, you may not really, really know what God, but sometimes as we pray in tongues, after praying for some time, God will open certain scriptures to us. As we open the scripture, I begin to read, it's called that there's a strong connection between the tongues we just spoke and certain scripture that we eventually open. God uses the word of God as a compass to guide in our tongue interpretation. So when you pray in tongues in the spirit, when we use our prayer language, we are actually decoding mysteries. We are speaking mysteries. And those mysteries are hidden truth. What is mystery? Mystery are hidden truth. 
When we speak in the language of God, we speak in mysteries. Mysteries are hidden truth. There are certain truths that God will hide and encode in certain tongues. It's our job description to be able to sit down after prayer, allow the word of God, ponder the word of meditation, the word of, and our place of meditation. Certain scriptures begin to translate those things into actual reality. Praise the Lord. Now the third, the third wires of prophetic DNA is what I call what? Imania. Imania closer. Imania closer. The word Imania, Imania is spelled H-E-R-M-E-N-E-I-A. Then the word, word, the word closer as used there for tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. The word Imania is derived from a Greek word interpretation. It simply means translation. Every tongue that comes to you must be translated. Tongues would not make any spiritual sense except they are well translated. Except they are well interpreted. So the interpretation of tongues is what we call what? Is what I call imania. Closer. This is the supernatural ability. Amen. The supernatural ability to translate the unacquired spiritual tongues. I say tongues is a supernatural uh, language that is not acquired. You can acquire English, acquire sometimes you always to begin to pray. Certain working of the spirit, when the climate is being stirred up, God began to inspire you to begin to pray in tongues. When you pray, I say speaking in tongues is a spirit inspired language. Amen. So a mania, amen, is a supernatural ability to translate the unacquired spiritual language. Every tongue, gift of tongues, speaking in tongues, works side by side with gift of interpretation of tongues. Gift of praying in tongues works side by side with the gift of interpretation of tongues. Now, these are the programming that makes up that, that these are the program that God encoded and encrypted into our prophetic DNA. Amen. You cannot function in the prophetic. You cannot activate the prophetic essence, prophetic life, without decoding this very, uh, this very, uh, genetics that God has, this prophetic genetics that God has encrypted and encoded into your DNA. So praying in tongues need work side by side with interpretation of tongues. So as we begin to go, see there's a language, there are two different things. Understand the difference between the language of tongues and the gift of tongues. These are two different things. The language of tongues is one with our prayer language. Amen. Where that is being inspired by the language of the Spirit. There's a language of tongues, there's, there, there's a gift of tongues. The language of tongues is our responsibility as, as believers. As we encounter the person of the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit of God, as the Holy Spirit comes upon us, it empowers our vocal cord to begin to speak this language of tongues. This, these tongues is a, is a signature. It's what is an encoded mystery that God has put, where when we begin to pray, we we'll tap into His realm to begin to speak His language. The gift of tongue also is a special uh, ability or supernatural ability of the spirit given to people called into certain offices that it also works side by side with a gift of interpretation of tongues. I mean, of all, we, 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 we are here to tap into that realm. And you cannot walk in the prophetic. There are sometimes when I go to meetings, I'm speaking into people's life, it's a prophecy will come in form of tongues. As I begin to pray in tongues, pray in the spirit, when I begin to pray, Eventually, a few minutes later, when the atmosphere is saturated, God gives me an interpretation. So, word, God, what begin to come? God begins to translate those tongues in form of words. Amen. Now, the fourth wire of the prophetic, of every prophetic DNA is what I call Sophia. Sophia. The fourth wire of the prophetic spirit is what I call Sophia. The word Sophia is derived from a Greek word, wisdom. It's speaking about word of wisdom. Amen. Is the supernatural ability to intelligently make use of the knowledge of, of very diverse matters. Amen. Is the supernatural what? Ability to intelligently make use of the knowledge of very diverse matters. Now, you see, you cannot operate the prophetic without understanding, without activating the gift of what of wisdom. Every prophet must understand because I've seen so many people fall into a lot of trouble. How do you feel as a point pro you go to into a meeting and the Lord, a woman comes into it with her husband, they are pregnant. Maybe the woman is pregnant and she comes to her husband and God opens your eyes to show you that the, the person responsible 
for that pregnancy is not actually this very husband that is standing before you. If God showed to you that the person responsible for this pregnancy is one of the boyfriends that, that your wife has been going out with, the woman's wife has been going out now, it takes wisdom. It takes the gift of word of wisdom for you to be able to operate. Because any attempt by you, you make by saying, uh, the, ah, well, no, 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 this one is not your pregnancy. This is the person responsible for me. You will end up destroying the lives of people, destroying the family, the union. So the gift of word of wisdom is actually God's, God's wisdom. To helping us express prophetic giftings. Every person that operates in prophetic gift or operates in the prophetic must, must tap into this realm. The one of the things, one of the wires that you must activate is the word of Sophia. It's Sophia, which speaks about the word of wisdom. You cannot operate in the prophetic if you don't have wisdom. There are places you go to the God will show you revelation. You must learn as a prophet, it's not everything the Lord shows you that you speak. There are certain things God tells you about people that you don't want, you mustn't talk, you just pray about it. That even when you need to see, say, you don't need to carry your mark and be talking. There are certain times I go to meetings that God speaks me, speak, gave me word for people that I cannot say public. I will either pull the mic down to speak, whisper to them to their ears, or tell them, I will tell the pastor or them, let's meet after closing so that I can give this word to you. The word of wisdom works side by side with the prophetic office. Every prophet needs the word of wisdom. If you don't appropriate that gift of word of wisdom, that are and destroyed. Hallelujah. So the gift of word of wisdom is very essential to operating the prophetic. You, you don't have the right to operate in the prophetic if you are yet to be able to understand how the word of wisdom is very vital to the operation of prophetic. Praise the Lord. The word of wisdom is very important to us. It's very key. It's very vital to help us to be able to, to tap into the realm of the prophetic. So when God gives you word, when you see things that may not be very good, you must wisdom is what empower you to be able to be able to coordinate, to say it in a very diplomatic way. Like when Solomon was tested, one of the greatest tests of Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon operated in that very dimension. Two prostitutes were sleeping together. And one mistakenly slept on her child, and the child died. She woke up in the middle of the night, and she exchanged the child with the other one that is dead. And when they wake up in the daytime, the one that, that eventually woke up and saw the child dead, she knew that this is not her son. And she knew that the son that the other one carried was her own son. So they had to they take the two the case to Solomon to settle the matter. And through the gift of word of wisdom. We saw how Solomon was able to, okay, say so they should bring the baby. He asked them to bring a sword. And when they bought a the sword, he asked them to divide the child by two and give a half part to the both women. One of the women that her son actually died, that replaced her son with the, with the her dead son, with the living, with the other one, she was saying, yeah, they should, they should cut it. They should, Solomon should divide the child and give them half half. While the other one that the son was what, what asked, was, was legally asked, Ask Solomon not to kill the son, but rather to give it to the other one. So by the, by the operation of that wisdom of Solomon, Solomon was able to discern by the gift of wisdom that the child actually belongs to the one that is saying that the child shouldn't be killed, not the one that is saying the child should be divided. You cannot function in the marketplace without the gift of wisdom. There are certain things that God gives to you, instruction God speaks to you, to speak concerning people, that will require for you to be able to speak wisdom. Amen. So the, the fourth wires of every prophetic DNA is what I call what? Sophia. And I say so, the word Sophia is the Greek word for the word wisdom. It's a supernatural uh, ability for you to intelligently make use of knowledge of a very diverse matters. How that you can be able to use knowledge. You cannot be able to walk of what the give, give the word of knowledge and word of wisdom walk side by side. Sometimes when God gives you knowledge, insight, you need how to express the insight through the gift of wisdom. The gift of word of knowledge sees, taps, receives information and processes it. While the gift of word of knowledge releases it, conveys it, expresses it intelligently without offending it. Some, even when there are things that God shows to you that are not pleasing. But gift of wisdom is what gives you the ability for, for you to be able to diplomatically say it in a way that Christ will reveal. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the, the fifth one, which is the last one, is what I call what? 
the fifth wire of the prophetic DNA is what I call gnosis. Gnosis. G N O S I S. Gnosis. Amen. The word gnosis is derived from a Greek word, knowledge. It's a supernatural ability and intelligence to know matters and things by the Spirit. Amen. Gnosis, amen, is derived from the Greek word knowledge, word of knowledge. The word knowledge here. It actually means, amen, the supernatural ability and intelligence to know matters and things by the Spirit. There are certain knowing that happens in the Spirit. There are certain ways that you can, things that you never know by your four senses, by five senses. No matter how well read you are, no matter how aged you are, no matter how experienced you are, there are certain knowledge about people, information about people that you will not be able to know. It happens supernatural. It's a, it's a, it happens by certain supernatural inspiration. When the Holy Spirit inspires a man, it empowers you to be able to see, to know things. You, it's a natural knowing. It, you, it naturally just know. Sometimes when I come to stand before people to prophesy to them, I just know certain things. By this, I just know. And this knowing is not influenced by suspicion. It's not being suspicious. You know, so many of us fail to, dis, to di differentiate the gift of the sermon and the gift of you being suspicious. So when we walk in the market, we begin to suspect people. This one looks like a thief. This one looks like a robber. This one looks like a 419. This one looks like a Yahoo boy. The Yahoo boy will never look like a Yahoo boy. 419 will never look like it. There are so many people that were always by our, our, our five senses. We assume that these people are wrong business partners. But actually, in actual essence, these are the people that God has ordained to take you to the next level. So the gift of word of knowledge, ignos, amen, helps you to be able to know things by the spirit. You just is a supernatural knowing that is being initiated by the Holy Spirit. So these are what makes up our wiring as prophetic agent. Hallelujah. So I spoke about the five wiring. This is going to really bless you. It, it, they are the five wiring of the prophetic spirit. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis 41. Are we there? Genesis 41. And there arise after them seven years of famine. And all plenty. Are you catching me? Now this is actually talking about, talking about the prophetic wisdom of Joseph. Amen. Now, can I stop here? Let me stop here and see how God will help us to continue here. So eventually, I may not be able to talk about the... I may not be able to talk about the... Please don't mind the prayer, the Muslim prayer happening. The mosque is just beside my house here. There's a mosque opposite my house. So when I'm in the spirit, they're also in the spirit, in their own spirit praying. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So please don't mind the noise, the voice that is coming in right now. So let me stop here because if I was to go here, we're going to stretch the meeting. So... I intended to talk about the prophetic programming of Joseph and also talk about Daniel. But time will not permit us. Let me leave here. Probably tomorrow I can, I'll finish up tomorrow. Then I don't know how we can be able to move into uh, the science of prophecy. Amen. But I think, God, let me finish up this topic. Then we'll now dive into the science of prophecy. The Lord is going to help us. Father, thank you for my, my, my brothers and sisters. Let your hand be mighty over their lives. Oh, Lord. The revelation that you have just spoken to us, the wisdom, Lord, to be the doers of your word and not the hearers alone, we receive in the name of Jesus. The wisdom to be the doers of your word and not the hearers alone, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Let your word, every spiritual program, every spiritual genetics that we have encoded and, en and engrafted, that we have encrypted into our spiritual DNA by the workings of the Spirit, let, the, let, the, let those giftings be manifested in the name of jesus every spiritual giftings every spiritual seed every spiritual potential that you are putting us that are yet to find expression i join my faith with everyone listening to me i command supernatural activation in the name of jesus every spiritual veil that the enemy has put i crush it i tear every veil in the name of jesus i command your life bless i command everything that the enemy has stripped away from you i command supernatural restoration every opportunity that the enemy has stripped away from strip away from you i command supernatural restoration in the name of jesus every seed every seed every signature that god has put in you i command supernatural restoration in the name of jesus 
I command every blind, every spiritual blindness that the enemy has sealed in your eyes, I command it to be removed in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual veil that the enemy has veiled your spirit, that the enemy has veiled your spiritual gifts, that the enemy has veiled your life, I command those veils to be consumed by fire. Everything that has not been working in your life begins to work right now. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has not been working in your life, in your finances, in your destiny. I speak the life. I speak the breath of God. I speak the breath of God over it to begin to walk in the name of Jesus. Every demonic manipulation against your life, I crush it. I dismantle it. I dismaterialize it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. So I meet you here tomorrow, same time by 12 p.m. to 1. And the Lord is going to really help us. Amen. So tomorrow... I could continue from here. I could start off from uh, uh, the new topic, uh, the science of prophecy. Anyone that will just release me, I'm going to do. But I don't want to be in a hurry to rush into another topic when God has not finished saying what he's saying in the, single, in the other topic. God is going to bless us, bless us tomorrow. So I look forward to meeting you by 12 tomorrow. Please go ahead to share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your life will never remain the same. I love you all. I love you with the love of Jesus. I love you. I truly love you with the love of Jesus. I love you with the love of Jesus. So please go ahead, share this broadcast. The Lord bless you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you.